of students, welcome to week one of Digital Arts 2. The first thing we're going to do is uninstall, if you have it on your computer already, and install Inkscape so that your version is new and set to default. I currently have Inkscape, so I'm going to show you how to uninstall it. I'm just going to do a search for uninstall, install programs. It says it's going to be under apps and features. Okay, so I'm going into my settings and for me it's under apps and features and it has all of my apps right here and I can search for Inkscape and there it is. If I click on it, it gives me the option to uninstall it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now and I'm not sure why it's not showing the whole thing. Do you want to allow this app to make changes? Yes. And I'm going to click next and uninstall. If you've never used Inkscape, I'm not sure if you're in the right class because this is Digital Arts 2 and you should have Digital Arts 1 already. So make sure you're in the right place. If you're not, just send me an email and let me know. Okay, that took quite a bit, so if yours is still uninstalling, you can just pause this video and then start back up. And then after it says completing Inkscape uninstall finish, So hopefully that is finished and now I'm going to go ahead and open my internet browser and I'm going to go to inkscape.org and once I'm in Inkscape you'll notice that there is a download button. There's also other information on Inkscape. Um, you can look at the gallery all of the different creations. They have lots of learning resources. Find out what it's capable of. What is Inkscape? How can I get it? It's free. Anybody can get it. It's awesome. So there's all kinds of different things you can look at here on the website. I'm going to go ahead and click on the download menu bar here and I had to click on the second one. Okay, so I have Windows. Um, if you have something else, then you're going to have to work it that way. And I have used the 64-bit myself. My computer is not that great. And I haven't really noticed a difference between 32 and 64-bit. So I'm going to go ahead and go with 64. And I'm going to do installer in EXE format. If you'd like to make a donation, you can make a donation. And it is oddly putting it, I'm gonna put it in my downloads. So there we go. I think I've already seen that saved there before. <laughs> Save it again. Do you wanna replace it? Sure. Okay, so once you have this downloaded, you still have not installed it at this point you have to open it and if it was in your downloads folder or wherever it is that your downloads go um, you'll just have to right click and open that .exe file and then it's going to ask um, at least on school computers if we want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your device and you'll say yes Okay, you're going to select a language, and I'm going with English. And then welcome to Inkscape Setup. Click Next, Next, Next. It's going to save it under my program files. Install. And this might take a moment, so you can pause the video if you need to. All right, and then once it's finished, you will click Finish, and your Inkscape should be ready to rock.
So I'm going to check and see. Oh, look, it's right down here on my menu bar. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Excellent. Um, it looks like it has my text pulled up. That's pretty wild. I had my text pulled up the last time I was using it. Um, if you are wanting to um, hide away any of these items, you can iconify this doc. These are actually called docs. So yes, you have the toolbar doc over here, and this is the layer doc. So there's all these different docs and um, you have like your palette down here at the bottom. You guys know all of this. You used Inkscape before. I'm gonna go ahead and just click X and close my doc because um, I don't really need it. My fill and stroke is here. And if you remember last time uh, you were in my class, you know that Inkscape uses a lot of RAM and I have to save constantly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do file save as and you have to decide where you want to put your Digital Arts 2 folder. I always like to save images in my pictures, so I'm going into pictures. And I do already have a Digital Arts 2 folder in here, but if you don't have one, all you do is look for the Create a New Folder icon and you can create one. Or you can always right click and New Folder. So that's a way to create your digital arts folder. So I'm going to um, go ahead and double click on mine and I will create a new folder for this school year, 18, 19, block three, digital arts two. And I'll just save that. And I wish that could move up there. I think I just put it inside that folder. I didn't mean to. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And I will paste it back here. Okay, so you can move your folders around. I'm not sure why 1819 isn't coming first in my alphabet, but if I want that to be the first folder, I could just put a one in front of it, hopefully, and go save. Okay, now that I have a one, with a space, it'll be the first folder that comes up. Okay, excellent. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save this as uh, my orientation assignment. And I really should have uh, used proper naming convention. So I always want you to do your name just like you would if you were turning in a paper to your teacher. So my name is Rachel Giroux. So I'm gonna put my first and last name. And I always want you to have your first and last name at the beginning of your file because all of your files that I save, I want them to be in the same location. And they will be if they all start with the same letter, okay? So please start with your first and last name. Orientation assignment works great. The SVG, Scalable Vector Graphic, is the file extension and you'll just click Save. Okay, and then once you save, you can see the name of your file appear at the top. You're always going to submit files that have names. Let's just do a really quick review. If I hit the number five, that is going to maximize my canvas size. I can change my canvas size by going into File, Document Properties, okay? And when this comes up, you'll notice that you have options for page sizes. Um, you can do like US letter size, eight and a half by 11 that you could print or legal size. Um, there's all kinds of different templates that you can use. And then another thing that's really important to be able to do is um, decide what size you want it to be and be able to convert it to that. I personally like thinking in inches. Um, I have a really good gauge of inches because all paper is eight and a half by 11. And um, so I like to change the units to inches and then you can always type in the value that you want. So let's say I want my width to be six and my height to be four. Okay, so that's six inches by four inches. Um, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead, maybe I'll double that and I'll go 12 by eight. 
Okay, that fits in my screen a little better. I like that. And um, you don't do save or anything. You um, also can uh, show your page border or take your page border off. Um, I actually prefer you guys, I'm gonna have to um, click save really quick because I ran out of RAM. If it stops working, that means your RAM came, <laughs> is used up. So I like to see the page border. So students, I would appreciate it if you would leave the page border. Um, that way you work here. I've had some students that will end up working somewhere really far off the canvas and I sometimes I can't find the work and sometimes they can't find the work. So if you stay on your canvas, then you'll always be able to get back to your work and you're just gonna close this by hitting the number five, okay? All right, so you can go ahead and save your changes as often as you need to. Remember we have layers and you find the layers under the layer menu at the top at the very bottom. So if you're not seeing your layers on the right hand side, just click on layers here and they'll come up. If you wanna change the color of things, you're going to click fill in stroke. Okay, fill is the color that it's filled with. Stroke is your outline and stroke style will allow you to increase or decrease the width of the stroke and change the ends and um, do dashes and things like that, okay? Right now there's nothing there because we haven't created anything yet. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go down the list of shapes. So let us start with this rectangle tool. And I am going to just draw a rectangle. So it's, it's just perfectly black, okay? So I've got a fill and it says that my fill is flat color. You can change that to linear gradient. Oops, I'm running out of RAM. You've got circular gradient. You've got a mesh gradient, okay? So within all of these gradients, you can also change the color. So right now the color, the basic primary color was black. You can come down here and change it to any of these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and change it to red. Oh, but then it went back to a solid fill. So if I want the gradient again, I'll have to click to get my gradient back, okay? Um, that is pretty sweet. You can use this to drag your gradient around and decide where you want it. And click Save, and you can double click, I believe, Maybe it won't let me. Um, if I have the gradient tool selected, I should be able to double click and add, yes, a new node in the middle. And I can actually use the color picker um, or I can just pick a color at the bottom and I can change the color of that. So let's see if I can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do yellow. Yep, so you can double click. And this down here is your gradient tool. And if you're not seeing it, click on these uh, double arrows down here you'll notice that there isn't enough room on there, so the mesh, the dropper, and the connector are all hidden. So if you're not seeing it, just click the double arrows. You can double click here and choose another color if your RAM is working. <laughs> okay, that's fun. And let's see, you can also increase your blur. So I don't know if that'll make a difference, but that makes it look pretty fun. Like you could easily make a rainbow in the sky. That would be really pretty using your blur. Excellent. And you could use your pen tool. So it's a little bit how to use the gradient. And another thing about rectangles, I'm gonna go ahead and create another one, is you can make squares with the rectangle tool by holding down control as you click and drag. So you'll notice when you hold control, it maintains square proportion for you. All right, so now I have a perfect square and I can grab the corners. Whoops, that's the wrong corner. I can grab the rounded one and I can round the edges and I can actually make a perfect circle that way. Now I have a circle. Okay, so that's fun. You can use it that way so you can make different shapes. Um, this is, you can just grab it and move it around. I'm not sure what that is. I'm just gonna control Z out of that. Okay, so what's this one? Okay, so, all right. 
Perfect, so that's how to make a square and what's this one right here? This says make corners sharp again. So if you want your sharp corners back, you can just click here. Sweet. Now one of the things that you'll notice is that it doesn't look like I have a stroke and it's true because the X for none is highlighted here. If I wanna add a stroke, I can just click right here. I'm gonna click save to make sure that I have a ram. Okay, so I should have a stroke now. I can choose the color of my stroke. There's different um, ways of changing the color in your fill and stroke. You've got the RGB tool bar. You've got, well, these are called sliders, HSL, CMYK. And my personal favorite is the wheel. I love the wheel because you can just grab this outer edge and move the basic color out here and then you can click in the middle and you can make shades of that color or tints when you add white or just go back to that pure color itself. So I love that color wheel, but that looks great. And it's nice, I can actually see my stroke or the outline and the reason why is because the width is at three. So if you can't see your stroke, then you've probably got your width set to something like 0.1. You can't even tell there's a stroke there. So come over here to the stroke style. You can actually just type in numbers too. All right, so now I have a great stroke. Fabulous, I'm gonna click save. Okay, you've also got these 3D boxes that you can use to create 3D effects. Not really, I don't use those very often, to be honest with you. Maybe that's something we'll do this block is learn how to use those. Okay, the circle or the ellipse tool. So this one, you can draw ellipses. And just like with the rectangle tool, if you wanna draw a perfect circle, you have to hold down Control and draw a circle. Okay, and this one's fun. You've got one of those little circles and you can create an arc if you want to and that's if you have are drawing your cursor towards the center of the circle okay you're gonna get that arc however if you move the cursor towards the outside and move it around that's when you're gonna get your pac-man waka 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 okay how do you change the stroke or outline color well you can go over to your fill in stroke box and if you don't have a fill and stroke box up, that is under object, fill and stroke, okay? So you'll go to stroke and change the color here, okay? But there's another way that you can change the stroke and that's using the palette down here. You'll notice if I click on a color on the palette that it is going to change the fill. So to change the stroke, you hold shift. Okay, hold down shift and then you can change the stroke using your palette and your palette goes on and on forever. It is vast, it is wonderful. So you can hold down shift and change that to a bright, happy color. All right, the next tool is the star polygon tool. So I'm gonna just grab a star, or yeah, draw a star and you'll notice that it drew uh, exactly the same color and stroke as the previous. And so remember that fill and stroke does stay in its memory. So if you're ever drawing something and you can't see anything, go to your fill and stroke and give it some color, give it a stroke, um, it will show up, okay? Sometimes people will X out their stroke and X out their fill and don't have anything to fill and stroke it with, but the shape is still there. Um, you just have to give it, apply a fill and apply a stroke so you can see it. So what we have here is a star. You can see that star is highlighted with 22 quarters. And of course you can change the corners or tips of the star, okay? And then you can also grab this fun handle and do that. If you hold down control, 
and move that handle. Okay, it looks okay. Let's hold down shift. Oops, I have to hit my save. I'll hold down shift and move that and see. Ah, that rounds the corners. So shift will do some really fun things. So play around with these. Um, what happens if I move that? Okay. Fun. All right, so I hope you're following along and getting some great shapes. I'm going to go ahead and grab my polygon tool again, and this time I wanna draw a polygon instead of a star. But of course, it saved all of those settings, and I'm gonna to have to manually change it now. So I'm going to click on polygon. You'll notice that it changes to a polygon. This is rounded. So if I don't want it rounded, let's see, what do I need to put? I'm gonna try one. Okay, I can just go ahead and increase this see what happens does it get sharper oh how fun okay so you can play around with that nice okay so play with these settings uh, randomized you can play with randomized cool so you can get some really fun effects yeah I like that um, you can change a number of corners and as you do that the randomness gets even funner it's like Picasso over here loving it okay so have some fun and play around with your shapes. Um, next, we're going to have the spiral tool. So you can add a spiral, pretty simple, easy enough, right? All right, you can unwind your spiral if you're not wanting the inside to be like that. And maybe you just want it to start there. Um, let's see, it's got the number of turns. You can increase it manually this way. Uh, divergence is going to increase and decrease the distance between the spirals. So that's fun. Let's see what the inner radius does. Okay, that moves that puppy around. All right, this little paintbrush right here, I'm gonna click save, says reset shape parameters to default. So I can go ahead and reset that and it'll go back to the default. Let's see if I can click Control Z Oh, it, it, it didn't bring it back to where it was when I hit Control-Z. Well, maybe it did, and I just don't remember. Okay, so file, save as, or save. So remember that you do have um, Control-Z, and with the spiral selected, I'm gonna go ahead and um, add a fill. And when I do that, you'll notice it gets a little quirky there too. And it looks like Got a stroke, of course. You can change the color. Click save. I thought it could, oh, maybe it's set in black. Okay, this little guy over here was all the way in the black area, so it wasn't actually changing the color. Okay, so you can change the color of your stroke, and I can increase my stroke so you can actually see it a little better. So that when I am changing the color, you're seeing it. And then of course you can always change it by holding down shift and clicking the palette down below. Okay, so shift and click and it won't work unless you have some RAM to work with. <laughs> okay, so that changed the color of that. All right, so those are some fun things that you can do. And then you have your pencil tool. And when you have the pencil tool, I believe if you just hold down control and click, it makes a circle. Yeah, you have to, whoops, you can hit escape. <laughs> so save, okay, so control, click, and that makes circles, little dots. Give that little guy a dot. And you can zoom in. Just clicked on that zoom tool and I'm just clicking. And you can, uh, I haven't shown you guys this, but this is your select and transform objects. So if you're ever needing to change an object, you can. Now just remember that now that I've played around with it, it's not a circle anymore, so I'm gonna hit Control Z. If I want it to stay a circle, I have to hold down Control, hold Control while I'm sizing it, okay? That is awesome. Now I should be able to move it a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out by holding down, I think. Shift while you click, we'll zoom it back out, or it can hit the number five. 
and remember five will bring me right back to my canvas in full screen. Perfect. Um, the pencil tool does some other things. Let's see. The pencil tool does straight lines. I think if you just click at one, whoops. Oh, okay, yeah. I click and then click and it makes a line. Click, click, and it makes a line. Click, click, and it makes a line. Click, click, and it makes a line. If you want to make it so that you have a horizontal line, I believe you have to hold down control. So you go click, control, click, and it's a perfectly horizontal line. Or you could do click, hold down control, click, and it'll make it perfectly vertical. I think it also does 15 degree increments, so I can go click, hold down control, and then if I click about that place over there, it's going to be a 15 degree increment. If I do another click and then hold down my control and click over there, now it's 45 degrees. I'll try over here and see if I can get in the middle. Okay, so that's 15, 30, 45. Click, hold down control. 45, 55, 60. Click, hold down control. 75, and then the next one would be 90. So you can do 15 degree increments with your pencil tool. And then um, the best tool of all is the Bezier tool. The Bezier tool is what we vector with, and this is the one that you want to get proficient with. Okay, so that one says draw Bezier curves. All right, so this is where, let's say, um, if I wanted to Bezier this, I'm going to look for um, corners pretty much. So I'm just going to go click, 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 click. I know these are imaginary corners, but if you have a drawing, Okay, I didn't do that right. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna pause it while I do this. Okay, um, I always have to click save. I forget before I hit my last one. So here I have a basic outline. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and I'm just gonna, um, I wanna zoom in on just that object. So I'm gonna click my zoom tool and I'm just gonna grab and zoom around it and then that's gonna bring that right to the center. I'll hit, oh, it doesn't let you control Z zoom. Um, but all I did was just grab my zoom tool, clicked and dragged around it, and it zoomed in on what I had clicked and dragged around. So next is your um, your nodes tool. So here's edit paths by nodes. I'm going to click on that, and this is where now I can grab these edges here and I can round them. And I literally am just grabbing it and dragging it. I have to click save every time, but when you do yours at home, you probably won't have to. So this is how you can use the pen tool to draw pretty much anything. So if you were to um, just copy paste an image on a layer, And then on another layer, you wanted to take your Bezier tool and trace it. This is pretty much how you would do it. Okay, so now that I have that done, perfect. I can fill that um, just by going into fill and adding a fill. And of course, I've got that's all the way in the black area and so you have to remember that this inside piece moves around so I can fill that any way that I want to. Isn't that fun? I can create a gradient in there if I want. I could do a circle gradient and it looks like th that is applying. <laughs> I clicked on that gradient right there and it just applied it to it so that's fun. Um, I can move that around so that it's off-centered um, I can adjust these nodes that I added as well. So it's pretty fun. And I just want you guys to have a ball. So now that I've done that, I could actually select it and move it. 
It doesn't have to stay right there. You can grab that and bring it anywhere, okay? So that's a basic overview of all of the, the basic tools that we use. There's also the text tool. There's the calligraphy tool too. And you can go ahead and practice those as well. So I'm gonna zoom back out by holding shift. And when you are finished going through all of those tools, I want to just see evidence that you have um, changed your strokes that you have changed your fills, that you know how to make a dot, um, that you know how to make a Pac-Man, that you know how to play around with the polygon star tool, that you can make a gradient, that you can use your Bezier tool to draw something and fill it, your spiral. Show me that you know how to hold down control and make pencil lines at different controlled angles. So it does not have to be this random, but for orientation purposes, I do want to see that you have reviewed and are, have, you know, brought your basic tool skills up to speed since it's probably been a while since you used the program. All right. Thanks.